Hi, the topic is Hamiltonian cycle. In this video, we will learn what is Hamiltonian cycle. Then I'll show you how to solve it using backtracking. Using an algorithm, I will explain you how backtracking is useful for solving the problem. First of all, let us understand what is Hamiltonian cycle. See, if a graph is given, then we have to start from some starting vertex and visit all the vertices exactly once and return back to the starting vertex. So that forms a cycle. So we have to check that. Is there any Hamiltonian cycle possible in a graph? If possible, then what is a cycle? And if there are multiple cycles, we have to find out all those cycles. So the problem is to find out if there is any Hamiltonian cycle in a graph or not. So the problem looks similar to traveling salesperson problem. In traveling salesperson problem also, we have to start from some vertex, visit all the vertices and return back to the starting vertex. But that is a minimization problem where we have to find out a minimum cost tour. But here, if you take it as a tour, we have to find out all possible tours. Now let us know a few important things. First of all, the graph given may be directed or non-directed, but it must be connected. If it is not connected, then the cycle is not possible. Means if a graph is having multiple pieces, multiple components, then it is not possible to have a Hamiltonian cycle in a graph. And one more thing is, this is a NP hard problem. Means exponential time taking problem. So there is no easy way to find if there is any Hamiltonian cycle present in the graph or not. So let us manually find out if there is any Hamiltonian cycle in a graph. Let us take this graph first. I'll start from vertex 1, then I will visit vertex 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, then 1. Then 1 to 2, 3, then 4, then 5, then 6 and 1. This is one cycle. Even I can go from 1 to 2, 2 to 6, then 6 to 5, 5 to 4, 4 to 3, then 3 to 1. So I have one more cycle, 1 to 2, 2 to 6, 6 to 5, 5 to 4, then 3, then 1. Yeah. One more cycle, 1 to 6, 6 to 2, then 2 to 5, then 5 to 4, 4 to 3, then 3 to 1. So 1 to 6, 6 to 2, 2 to 5, 5 to 4, 4 to 3, then 3 to 1. See, you can find that there are more than one cycles possible. So the problem is we want to find out all possible Hamiltonian cycles in a graph. If they are possible or not, if they are possible, then how many are possible? We want all of them. Now there is one more cycle I will show you. 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, then 6 to 1. 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 1 and then 1 to 2, 1 to 2, one more cycle, no, wrong, see, this is same as this cycle, same as this cycle, that was starting from 1 and is starting from 2, so if you change the starting point, the cycle has not changed, you see the order of vertices 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, then 2, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, then and 2, so we are getting in the same order. So this is not another cycle, it's the same cycle, just you are taking the starting point as some other vertex. So you have to also take care that you are not taking the duplicate cycles or you are not taking the same cycle again. That's it. Now I have few more examples here from this also we'll observe few things and we will learn few facts about Hamiltonian cycle. There is a graph given, let us find out if there is any Hamiltonian cycle in this one, 1 to 2, then 2 to 3, 3 to 5 then 5 to 4, then 4 to 1. This is one cycle. One more cycle, let us check. 1 to 2, then 2 to 4, then 4 to 5, then 5 to 3, then 3 to 1. So there are more than one cycles possible. Let us try in this graph. 1 to 2, then 2 to 3, then 3 to 7, then 7 to 6, then I have to go on 4. If I go on 4, I cannot come to 5. If I go on 5, I cannot go on 4. So Hamiltonian cycle is not existing in this graph. Let us take this graph. 1 to 2, then 3, then 4, then 3. Then I will go to 6 and then 5. I cannot come back on 1 again. I have to come via 3. So on such graphs, Hamiltonian cycles are not possible. Why? Because this vertex is a junction for a graph or a connecting point for the graph and this is called as articulation point. 
So if there is an articulation point in a graph, then Hamiltonian cycle is not existing in a graph. Let us look at this one. 1, then 2, then 4, then if I go on 5, I cannot come back and go to 3. So here also it's not possible because these type of vertices are there. They are called as pendant vertices. Because of these pendant vertices, uh, Hamiltonian cycle is not existing in a graph. So we learn two more things that if at an articulation point, then Hamiltonian cycle not possible in a graph. If there's a pendant vertex, then also Hamiltonian cycle is not possible in a graph. That's all I have explained you about Hamiltonian cycle. Now I will take a algorithm and an example graph. Then I will show you how backtracking helps us in solving this problem. Let us look at the algorithm and understand how backtracking is useful for solving this one. I have a graph here and this is the adjacency matrix for a graph. This is the algorithm which is having two methods or two functions. So two pieces of code are there. This is the starting point and this is using this algorithm. This is performing backtracking and for getting the next vertex this is helping. I will not trace it right now. First I will show you the working, explain you the working. Then from the working I will just point out which line was doing the work that I have shown you. So let us start. This algorithm uses this adjacency matrix and it uses this array for finding the cycle. So whenever all these values are filled and the cycle is found, it will display the result. Now initially all these values are zero. Let us start. Now let me start. I'll explain you throw state space tree to understand the working of an algorithm. And if you remember, backtracking works just like depth first search. It performs depth first search on the problem. Let us start. We don't want a duplicate cycle, so we will fix the starting vertex. So we make the first vertex, that is starting vertex is one. Now here we may be getting different vertices. So this is the starting vertex, one. So let us start a state space tree. Now we'll start from the second position onwards. What should be the second vertex? If you are starting from one, then where you should go? You should go on three or two or five. What all the possible we will try here. So this Hamiltonian algorithm will start from this vertex. So what it does, I'll explain here. I will not show there line by line. I'll explain here. See, it will try to put one here. One, this is the same thing only. This is already there. So if there is any vertex that is appearing again, it will avoid that. Then it will try two here. Yes, two is not already is not present. The next thing is there any edge from one to two? So here one to two, one to two. Yes, there is an edge. So this is valid. So take this one, one to two. Then it will go on to the next position. So here it is already zero. So first it will make it as one and check if it is already there. Yes, it's already there. So keep here. 2. It's already there. So change this to next value 3. It's not there. But there should be an edge between 2 and 3. So 2 to 3 there is an edge. Yes, there is an edge. So it's valid. So 2 to 3 there is an edge. So from 1 we went on to the next step is what? 3. Then it will move on to this one. See once the vertex for this position is finalized, it will move to the next one. Then here, it will try to keep 1, already appearing, 2, already appearing. See, these values I am not showing here. I can even show like this, 1, 1, bounding function. If you remember, the bounding function is used in backtracking that will kill the node. See, if I write 1 here, it is invalid, 2 also invalid, 3 also invalid, then 4. So I am not writing all invalid nodes. So here we try 1, then 2, then 3 it's already there so 4 check is there any edge from 3 to 4 yes it's there so include 4 the next here 1 invalid 2 no not possible 3 4 5 shall we have 5 here and check 4 to 5 is there an edge yes 4 to 5 there is an edge so include 5 also now once you have reached this position in an array fifth position in an array also verify that from 5 to 1 there is an edge or not 5 to 1 yes there is an edge so it means a cycle is found print this result 
this is the first answer we got first answer we got print this result see here i will show you see it was calling for the next vertex and x of k plus 1 mod n plus 1 what is that i'll explain so k plus 1 so it was taking next value after taking the next value it was checking whether it's becoming 0 no then is there any edge yes edge is there check it should not be duplicate this code is for checking duplicate see i was telling that when i take here 2 suppose 2 is already there don't take it then try next value x plus 1 3 is already there don't take it so there is an edge in between them also and there should not be any duplicate and if you have reached the last position that is fifth position in an array fifth position then also check that there is an edge back to vertex one that it should not be zero it should be one that's it so this is how it is verifying this is the part of a bonding function taking the next vertex and checking whether it is already taken is it duplicate is there an edge from previous vertex is it having an edge to the first vertex? Let me explain you what are the things that are checked in bounding function. First thing, you should not take duplicate. Second thing, whenever you take any vertex, there should be an edge from the previous vertex. Second thing. Third thing, if you're on the last vertex, then there should be an edge to the first vertex. If so, then it's an answer. These are the things we check in the bounding function. So this is what it is trying with the bounding function. So we have finished till here let us continue the algorithm 5 tried the next value it will become 0 0 means stop right so stop means go back where this one here at this place see this is the starting point 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 instead of 4 what is the next value that can be taken 5 check is it already appearing no so 5 is not there so it's valid 3 to 5, there should be an edge. 3 to 5, 3 to 5, is there is no edge. No, we cannot take this. So take the next value. So after 5 comes what? 0. So it is just like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 0 again. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, then 0 again. So that is the method. So mod gives the values like that. Right? Mod n plus 1, 5 plus 1, 6. If you do, you get the values like this. So we cannot try anything here. Then go back. It will go back to this one. Third here. See 1, 2 over. 1, 2 over. For the third one. Instead of writing 3. Can we write 4 here. Next value. So 2 to 4. There should be an edge. So here I will show you. 2 to 4 years. There is an edge. So after 2. Take 4. Then to the next one. Write 1. Not valid. 2. Not valid. 3. Valid, but 4 to 3 there should be an edge. Yes, 4 to 3 there is an edge. So take 3 also. The next one. Can I write 1 here? No, already there. 2 also already there. 3 also already there. 4 also already there. 5, I can write this one. But the 3 to 5, is there an edge? 3 to 5. No, this is not valid. So take it as 0. Right, next value is 0. 0 means come back and write 4 here, not valid. 5 here, yes it is valid. So this was bounded, this was killed. So at this place, instead of 3, now we can write 5. So 4 to 5, there is an edge, yes there is an edge. So we can write 5 here. Now next place, I cannot write 1, 2, but I can write 3 here. If I write 3 here, 5 to 3, there should be an edge. No, 5 to 3, there is no edge. So here we cannot write 4 or 5, so write 0 and here also 0. Come back. Next value of 4, 5. So at this place, after 2, it is 5. Next here, what it can be kept here? 1, 2, 3 can be kept. Then 5 to 3, we know well that there is no edge. So next, 4, can it be kept? Yeah, 4 to 5, it's there. So 4. Then next here, 3 can be possible. So 4 to 3, there is an edge. Yes. Then 3 to 1, is there any edge? Yes, 3 to 1, there is an edge. So what is the path we got? 1 to 2, 2 to 5, 5 to 4, 4 to 3, 3 to 1. So, so far we got two answers. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 1. Now here also 1, 2, 5, 4, 3 and then 1. So we got two answers. If you continue, you may find all possible Hamiltonian cycles in this one. So I have taken an example and explain you. Right. Now I will show you the algorithm. 
I'll explain the algorithm. See, we'll start from vertex 2. In vertex 1, first place, we will write 1 only, fixed. From second place onwards, we will try. So what it will do, it will try to find out the next value. So what is the next possible value? What are the condition? The value that you have taken should not already existing. Means here you cannot take 1, 2, 5 and 4 here. You cannot take those things. First condition. Second thing, whatever you have taken here, then there should be an edge to the previous one. There should be an edge to the previous one. K, whatever you have taken, K minus 1, there should be an edge. It should not be 0 means in this graph, it should not be 0 means there should be an edge. And this for loop is for checking duplicate. It should not already be existing. Two things. And the last thing is, if this is the last place, then this should have an edge to vertex 1. So if this is the last place, then there should be an edge to the first one. These are the three things check in the condition. So this will try all possible values for a place. So what are the values? It started from 0 actually, right? 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. All these values it will try here. Similarly, here also it will try and here also it will try here also. For every position it will try. And it will try recursively. So it looks like depth first search like this. So this is the code for actual Hamiltonian. It will check the next value. If the value is not zero and it is last place, then it will print the answer. Last place, print the answer and will not go further and it will go back. If it is not the last node, then it will call recursively Hamiltonian for next vertex k plus one. Means once we got the answer, which is not zero, we'll go for the next. If the answer is not zero, we go for the next. If answer is not zero and we are on the last, we'll print, we'll not go next, but we'll go back. That's it. This is how Hamiltonian cycle algorithm works. Now, most of you are preparing for the examination. So for the examination purpose, you have to explain what is Hamiltonian cycle. Just in one or two sentences, you can finish it. And you have to define the bonding function. These points you define clearly. That is better. In words only, you don't have to write on the code. If they ask for code, you can write it. Or you can write your own pseudo code. You don't have to write the loop and all. Just write it in words for mostly for university examinations I'm talking about. So algorithm is important in Hamilton and cycle mostly, right? Tracing tree is not useful here because tracing tree, it can expand to a very big tree also if you try all possibilities. If the number of vertices are growing, then the height also grows and the number of nodes also grows. So if at all, if for explanation, if you want, you can write on this one. And the last thing, see, I'll remove this here. Five places, one, two, three, four, five places. This was fixed out of four places. What we tried, two, three, four, five, two, three, five, four, two, three, two, five, four, five, three, all possibilities. So this is nothing but what? Four factorial, four factorial. The algorithm is trying four factorial possibilities, four factorial. So for n vertices graph, n minus one factorial, Right, n minus one factorial. It is roughly n factorial only, and n factorial is big O of n power n. If you know this, so the time complexity of this algorithm is n power n. That's all about this problem.